today. I'm here with, um, with Susie Tucker and with Anne Mills from East Griffith Preschool. Susie, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Yes, I'm Susie Tucker. I'm the director at this preschool. And I'm Anne Mills, and I'm a team leader at this preschool. So tell me, Susie, about East Griffith Preschool. Okay, well, we're a community-based preschool. We have three units. Um, which the third one is just a very new one, only two years old. And we also operate extended hours. So we have that happening outside of the traditional nine to three preschool hours. And uh, we're located in a, a residential area with a high school and long daycare and a shopping centre as our neighbours. And yeah, we just strive to provide the best possible service that we can and we like to think that we're providing as natural a, an environment as we can. And tell me about your childhood please. My childhood was spent outside. I, we had breakfast and went out straight away. We came in for lunch and had to be home by five I think it was for tea and I can't imagine living, uh, being inside for a long period of time. We had so much fun. Climbed roofs, climbed trees, we did a few risky things, I think. And we just roamed for streets. Yeah. And Susie, what was yours like? Um, yeah, I lived in town too, here in Griffith. And I just remember we lived on this really big block. It seemed like a really, really big block to me at the time anyway. And we had the whole block, front yard, backyard, sides. We had an outside toilet, which was a, a big memory for me. <laughs> and um, you know with the cobwebs and redback spiders and all that sort of thing but uh, we had lots of hedges so we had lots of sort of rooms in our yard and we would always make lots of cubby houses in you know funny places and we had the hugest mulberry tree in our backyard and uh, we would always you know make mulberry jam and mulberry soup and potions <laughs> and all those sorts of things and be covered, stained all over. And we never got in trouble. Yeah. So we must have had mm -hmm. outside clothes to wear or things like that. And animals, ducks and chooks and things like that. So yeah, we, we spend a lot of time outside too. So what do you think's changed for children now? Um, I think they spend a long time inside and I think this is partly because they love the computers and the technology, the TV, um, it's a low risk environment, parents are comfortable, they know where they are and they, as Susie has already previously we've talked about it, they go, to, they go to work for a long day and when they come home there's not much time left. Yeah, Susie what are your thoughts? Yeah I'm, I'm with Anne. Um, there's a lot more parents, mums especially, are working now compared to back when we were young. And yeah, they're, everyone's busy, 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 and not enough time. And I think technology has changed the world, the media has changed the world. There's not really very much positive stuff on the news and things. So. Mm -hmm. We're seeing, you know, kidnappings and, you know, all those sorts of things. So that makes parents fearful as well. So we're, we're, not, we're not being outside. We're not, you know, running down the road to our friend's place whenever we want. And what's, what does the Early Years Learning Framework and the National Quality Standards say about risk? Well, my perception is that it generally talks about having safe environments for children, but those safe environments still need to provide challenges for children. So mm -hmm. therefore, um, there needs to be some risks for them so that they can question and challenge and, and learn skills that they will need later in life. And so, and, and so how do you apply, approach, um, say, risk assessment in, your, in, your, in this service? I think that firstly, everybody has to be aware of, you know, the, the regulations what we have to comply with um, so that we're aware of that and we have to of course do all the necessary paperwork but if we if we do that and we've done that we do our daily outdoor checks and our indoor checks and all those sorts of things we've we've covered off on all those areas we've we've minimized any sort of really big dangerous stuff and so therefore then you can set about 
planning what, what else that you want to do mm. and how you mm. want to challenge children. Well, we, when we do any rules for like, say it's a risky outdoor play, well not even risky, just outdoor play and we've got a set of rules, the children help us come up with these rules. So they've got a lot of input. So I think they're quite happy and they can, you know, they get a lot of benefits out of helping us. What would you say would be the negative outcomes of having a risk-free childhood? Oh, no creativity. <laughs> Children that have no creativity and can't problem solve and help themselves and, and, and what, later and what, in life. So, so, so what's the risk about that? Later in life they don't have those skills and so they can't apply them to other situations that they're going to be faced with and they're going to be very reticent to try anything yeah. mm. and, and uh, relying on other people yeah. to make decisions for them um, or relying on googling stuff what do I do in this situation and, and all those sorts of things rather than having those skills embedded in their hearts and minds. So tell me about your play space. Okay well I think that we try to capture a big natural backyard yep. mm. um, and I think being in a residential area right on the corner here um, it just lends itself to, to being that. We can't really be anything else and we don't want to be anything else. We're trying to combine stuff that children have at home um, and also other features that they would, may not necessarily you know, have. have a chance. Not all have a, a riverbed in, yeah. you know, in our backyards yeah. um, and things like that. So um, yeah, I think that's the essence. Yeah. And you've been putting new stuff in here as well. We have, and, and I think that's like just like our conversations that we have about risky play or rules or whatever the topic may be. Mm. It's just one of those things that's always changing always because evolving. everyone has a different idea at different times. Different mm. parents have different ideas and all those sorts of things. So things, yeah, evolve. It does, definitely mm. is evolving. Mm. What do we know about children and adventurous play? Children are naturally curious. Yeah. They want to find out everything. They want to know how things open and close and shut and how to get under and over. Um, so we need to encourage that. Um, and I mean, I guess our first point of call is to make sure everything, again, is, is as safe as possible without losing that ability for them to go out and explore. And what does it provide them? being able to, to, to create a space or, or an opportunity for children to explore? What is it actually giving them? It gives them confidence mm. to do it again or not do it again. Yeah, yeah depending <laughs> on the outcomes. <laughs> um, and it's all those skills, problem solving skills, the creative stuff. You've got, you've, got, you've got rabbits here. Yes. So tell me about the rabbits because I think there's a really good example today yes. with one of, your, one, one of the young boys there with the rabbits today. So what's... What's, what's that provide them? Lots of kids probably don't have pets for a start. Yeah. So that was a, one impetus for getting mm. animals. And responsibility yeah. for caring so for animals. It just teaches them about, you know, how to handle things. Not just the animal, but how to handle, you know, tricky situations. Yeah. Because it's a tricky situation if they yes. when, when my yeah. scratches. Yeah. Because some, some children are very confident with handling animals and, and others aren't and a bit oblivious and he, the rabbit sort of fell down his top and gave him a bit of a scratch. And, and, and are parents okay for children to be um, exposed to those sort of risks? Well our parents have been very, very um, positive towards, towards the rabbits. Mm -hmm. Our rabbit had babies so we've had all that, yeah. <laughs> you know, little tiny babies and, and all those conversations so They've been very positive and I think sometimes it's, you know, well that's great because they can do that at preschool and we don't have to worry about it. But there's also parents that are thinking along those lines, but well, I can't really give my children that experience and it's so great that they can do that at preschool. So you're actually providing an example, a role, a role model to parents on, on, how, on how they can engage in that risky stuff yes. as well. So saying this is actually okay. Yeah. That's right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I learned the benefits outweigh the risk. So, so what are the psychological benefits of taking those risks for children? I think mainly their confidence. They grow in confidence. And you have to allow them to do that, not, do every, not solve everything for them all the time. 
Definitely confidence, self-esteem. Yes. And what about the physical benefits? I think um, inside and out. I'm thinking more of outside as well as the rabbits. Um, I think we're providing a, like it's for wellbeing and um, health, so like you're providing a physical environment full of natural things they can climb, run, hide. Um, so physically, spiritually and um, environmental knowledge is, is really uh, coming into it as well now. And with your team, because you've, you've got a fairly big team of people, not everybody's on the, same, in, on the same page at the same time, how do you manage the conversations around in, in, in building in risky play with, with children? Okay, well that's of course always going to be tricky because not everyone will be on the, on the same page, but you have to take that into account. I think everyone has to, the first and foremost, has to take into what we have to comply with because that's our, our, you know, base. And then we have to look at um, all the research out there, readings, all those sorts of things, what's being promoted as good practice and good for children. And then we have to work out as a team, I guess, and sometimes it's majority rules. Sometimes it's like, well, if you want to take on that project, go for it and let's see what happens. But generally, like if we, if we make a decision, let's have a go at it. Yeah. But again, it's like everything we do here, it evolves. And we're still learning too. Yep. Same as the children. You can only trial things. So you're being a really good role model, not only for, your, for your, each other, but also for children, because children are going to see. Like That's this right. morning, Jodie came outside was with, and was with the kids going on the yes. snail hunt. And she took her shoes off yes. and encouraged children to get outside and to, and to actually walk through the water. Some kids had gum boots on, some kids enjoyed splashing in the, in the puddles. And I think it's about using every, each educator has their own personal attributes to bring. And obviously Jodie's good at that sort of stuff. And other people are good at other things. Yeah. Anne's very good with animals. She's the animal guru and uh, <laughs> Dr. Doolittle but um, and other people are a bit more reticent about mm. things like that um, such mm. as myself with animals however um, I think when it comes to the children you've just um, sometimes you just have to suck it in and right, mm. I can do this and and it'll be okay yeah. but it's also showing them that it, it is okay if yeah. you're a little bit hesitant or a little bit scared or all those sorts of things. Mm. So okay. I think that's important for children to know that, that you can, can be wary. Yeah, because I think that's often a challenge in children's services is actually people are really reticent, oh, I'm not going to touch that bug because I don't like bugs. And so we mm. actually, we can give that impression then that that's actually not a thing we want to touch. Mm. That's right. Because it's actually, but really you, you don't want children to be too scared to touch anything. No. They need encouragement. They need encouragement. And that's yeah. what role models are. Sort of if you've got a person who enjoys yeah. animals that's or a person right. who's prepared to actually go and jump off something then yeah. it actually sort of shows. Mm. And you should be utilising everybody's strengths because everybody has different strengths yeah. and that's good for the children to see, different interests. So but do we have to challenge your own fears sometimes? I think we probably do but why can't you engage the children? There'll be a child out there who won't yeah. worry about picking up the bug so you know that's okay too. Yeah. And that's probably a really good yeah. thing, is it doesn't yeah. always have to be from us. That's no, right. that's right. Yeah. That, I think it's one of the things is sometimes we think that as educators we have to do all, it's all about us, mm. but it's actually, it's actually really all about the kids. Yeah. It think. is. And yeah. sometimes it's lovely to see other children show other children things, yeah. like picking up a bug and they know so much about it, yeah. and they're actually teaching the other children. I think that's beautiful. Yeah. Scaffolding between the children is happening all the time as well. What do you think parents' expectations of educators are? In, in these spaces around risk? They expect us to keep their children safe and so mm. we should because they're their children and we have a duty of care. Um, but once again, my point of view is you look, at, you look at the regs and everything that it says, you have all your I's dotted and your T's crossed, you have all your paperwork in place mm -hmm. and if that's done, to suit your service, I think that's very important too, then um, you can educate parents. 
and they're usually pretty happy. You know, it's like the rabbits. They, you know, that's something, oh great, they can do that at preschool because, you know, we can't do it at home. And that's another opportunity that my child will have. So I think, generally speaking, parents don't really mind what goes on. As long as they know why it's going yes. on. Yes. And I think that's probably the, the mm. challenge is how do we engage parents, is engaging parents. Communication with them. Yeah. In, in, engaging parents and also in, in children's learning and how and, and how you express the reason why we're doing this sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much Susie. Thank you very much Anne. Thank, Thank you. Conversation. Nice.